All right, guys. It is another cool and cloudy and pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization in the great state of Texas here on, uh, where are we, Wednesday, April 28th, 22, somewhere like that. So, uh, little dog and I, I have been out playing around with the Save the Planet battery operated lawnmower. I've never used one of these things. And uh, I have to sheepishly admit, guys, I am sold. Uh, as soon as my gas sucking lawnmower in New York, baby, breaks down, I am going to make the switch to the battery powered lawnmower to save the planet uh so anyway since i've been out falling in love with a lawnmower today just now getting around to uh getting around to the doomosphere waiting all around in uh the mainstream media and whatnot and coming over here to these little lefties at counterpunch uh see what they're up to and this is someone i've read from before this fellow who I think his uh, regular website is called Tom's Dispatch and this is a fellow named Tom Englehart uh, I think he's one one of the main guys over at Counterpunch and he's one of these uh, lefties who gets it a little uh, gets it a little bit and so his column that he wrote yesterday called A Duck and Cover World. Uh, you know, harking back, he's 77 years old. Tom is 77 and, uh, you know, laughing about anybody. And, and I barely remember this. I'm 62, but 77 year olds will remember that, you know, this big campaign when uh, we were all talking about. Uh, as I guess we're talking about again, you know, if you remember, I guess 70 years ago they were talking about the threat of Russia unleashing nuclear weapons and talking, you know, how you were supposed to duck and cover. Uh, you know, when you saw the atomic bomb flash, you were supposed to dive under your little desk at school to save your life. And uh, so he first half of this article is, you know, talking about those memories of how they were actually trying to convince us that we were going to save ourselves uh, from a nuclear, from a Russian nuclear attack by jumping under our school desk. And so here we are 20, 22 years later. So he picks up in the second half of a duck and cover world to Welcome to the Nuclear Age, Part 2, as history begins to repeat itself. So here I am, so many decades later. The world, of course, did not end, you know, back when he was a kid. I, I never actually ducked and covered to ward off a nuclear attack in what passed for real life. In those years, that SIOP, I, I guess we're supposed to know what the letters SIOP, in those years, that SIOP remained as much a fantasy as anything in the Twilight Zone. And though neither superpower actually dismantled its nuclear arsenal when the Cold War ended in 1991, with the implosion of the Soviet Union, quite the opposite, in fact, nuclear weapons did seem to retreat into the ether then into Bert the Turtle's fantasy world until, well, I hesitate here, but I have to say it, the invasion of Ukraine only the other day, CIA Director William Burns, once the deep, once deeply convinced 
of the dangers of offering NATO membership to Ukraine and long warning of a Russian backlash against such a policy publicly suggested that sometime soon Vladimir Putin might turn to atomic weaponry in his disastrous war there. Admittedly, he was talking about so-called tactical or battlefield nuclear weapons, each perhaps only one-third the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, not the monster nukes in both of our arsenals. Still, welcome to the nuclear age, part two, and of course, that's just to start on a situation that feels as if it could implode. After all, the war in Ukraine has already reached mind-boggling levels of criminal brutality and destructiveness, and you can feel that where, where it truly goes, no one knows. A recent Russian diplomatic note to Washington warned of unpredictable consequences if the Biden administration kept arming the Ukrainians. Meanwhile, the Russians all too publicly tested a new intercontinental ballistic missile, which Putin said would make his country's enemies, quote, think twice. Worse yet, it seems as if the global uh, it seems as if the global situation could burst out of control in an altogether unpredictable fashion if Putin begins to feel that Ukraine is a lost war. Above all, since Cold War Part One ended, a second world-ending possibility has now been piled atop the first in almost comic fashion. In fact, I have the urge to cry out, duck and cover, and not just because of those nukes that might sooner or later be brought to bear on Ukraine, leading to who knows what and where. After all, in 1991, when the Soviet Union disintegrated, who would have guessed that more than three quarters of a century after the dropping of the first atomic bomb, there would be once there would once again be war in Europe? Isn't that the oldest story of all? And don't expect good news soon either. In fact, according to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, the war in Ukraine will not even end this year, while CNN reports that some members of Congress and their aides are quietly making comparisons to the Korean War, which lasted for three years. And Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, who once thought Russian invaders could take the Ukrainian capital in 72 hours now evidently believes that war there could last, quote, at least three year, at least years for sure, close quote. Really? The Korean War? Such an old, old story and another war where the nuclear threshold was at least approached and once again, the world has split into two blocks in what could almost pass for a parody of the original Cold War, with each side already struggling for support from countries around the planet. And from there, we get into the fate of the Earth. If I were making all of this up, let me assure you, it would be considered the worst plotted take two imaginable. Oh, let's see, those humans did not learn a damn thing from almost destroying the planet and each other back then, so they decided to do the whole damn thing all over again. Only this time, they've thrown in an extra factor. Yep, you guessed it another way to destroy the planet.
duck and cover. Yes, indeed, this strangely old-fashioned comedy of horrors is taking place in an all-too-new context, given a factor that was not in anyone's consciousness back then. Of course, I am talking about climate change. I'm thinking about how the planet's top scientists have repeatedly told us that if fossil fuel use is not cut back radically, and soon, this planet will all too literally become a hell on Earth. And keep in mind that even before the war in Ukraine began, global carbon dioxide emissions had rebounded from pandemic drops and hit a historic high. They're talking about how in 2021, uh, CO2 emissions were higher than in any year in history. And it could only get worse in the chaos of the Ukraine moment as gas prices soar, panics set in, and all too little attention paid to the dangers of overheating this planet. I mean, none of this should exactly be a secret, right? If, for instance, you happen to live in the American Southwest or West, parts of which are now experiencing the worst drought in at least 1,200 years and successive fire seasons beyond compare, you should know just what I mean. The worst of it is that such new realities including, for instance, hurricane seasons to remember, are essentially the equivalent of movie previews. And mind you, I have barely even mentioned the ongoing pandemic. Yes, barely even mentioned the ongoing pandemic. Uh, I could make a, uh, a duck and cover comment here about the ongoing pandemic not worth a mention uh, in this article but if I made the obvious uh, comment uh, about a duck and cover world I would have this uh, video pulled down for medical misinformation so I am going to move on. Alright, back to Tom. It is sadly obvious what should be happening. The great powers, also known as the great fossil fuelizers, meaning China, the U.S., and Russia, should be working together to green energize our world fast. And yet, here we are fighting a new war in Europe launched by the head of a Saudi-style petrostate in Moscow, playing out his version of Cold War II with Washington and Beijing. Oh, and in the process, ensuring the burning of yet more fossil fuels. Brilliant! Excuse me if I stop a second. It's just a reflex, really, to yell, Duck and cover! Fast! Oh, and lest you think that is the worst of it, let's turn to the globe's second greatest greenhouse gas emitter of this moment and the greatest ever, historically speaking. Right now, it looks all too much like the Democrats could go down fast and hard in the 2022 elections and possibly in 2024 as well. After all, coal merchant Joe Manchin and the Congressional Republicans have sunk the president's Build Back Better bill and so much else, ensuring the Democrats of all too few accomplishments as the midterm elections approach and the polls already reflect that grim reality. Whether you're talking about former 
Gen Z supporters, Hispanics, oh well, you name it, President Biden's approval ratings seem to be spinning toward a pollster's version of hell as the war goes on, inflation surges, and the price of gas shoots through the roof. In fact, only the other week, his administration, which came into office singing its own climate-changing praises and promising as the future president, said on the campaign trail in 2020, quote, this is a direct quote from Joe Biden, no more drilling on federal lands, period, 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 close quote. Just opened bidding for new leases to do just that. Meanwhile, Donald Trump the man who pulled this country out of the Paris Climate Accords and the greatest party boss in memory luxuriates at Mar-a-Lago, raising sums beyond compare and paying no price for anything he's done. If his party takes over Congress and then the White House, it's not complicated at all. Just light a giant match and burn this planet down, assuming Vladimir Putin has not already done that. Call it hell on earth, and you are anything but exaggerating. The unthinkable? Start thinking, my friend. The Fate of the Earth? What's the title of a classic book on the nuclear nightmare by Jonathan Schell could soon be little short of a post-Trumpian joke. My advice, and I mean it, duck and cover! Yes, log. Duck and cover. And uh, anyway, no more uh, duck and cover comparisons, but with that, uh, I have to get back to saving the planet now that I have saved the planet with this little uh, battery operated electric lawnmower. I'm, uh, I guess we're ready to put down the landscaping cloth and the cedar mulch. We're going to go uh, shred some of these damn Texas cedar trees to save the planet. And I am fully in support of shredding every, they're not cedar trees, these invasive Mexican juniper trees. While I still can, I highly suggest you get out there and uh, trade in your gas sucking lawnmower for a save the planet battery operated lawnmower while you still can. Bye guys.